Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will, out here on Long Island. <laughs> um, I have been trying to catch some herring for like days now, days, weeks, um, and I have had no luck, <laughs> no luck at all. Um, and I was just sick recently, that's why I got a little bit of a cough still. <laughs> so please excuse that. But, uh, so one of the things that I thought of there's a couple of charter boats that are still going out. Um, one of them being the Captain Al. And these guys are beasts, man. They fish year round. The boat does not take a break. And this time of year they go out and what they end up targeting is cod. Um, they go about two hours offshore. I've gone on one of the trips. It's brutal. Um, the trip I went on, it ended up snowing while we were out there. Uh, so I'm gonna leave the fishing to them, but what I'm here to do is actually, I texted the captain to see if they bring anything back, if I can get the heads in the rack, and then we'll cook something with that. So they should be getting back to the dock, I don't know, maybe in the next like 20 minutes. So we'll hang out, when they come back, we'll see what they got. You know, the knots are awesome. What, do you just like scrape the meat off the racks? Yeah, the heads. Heads oh. and the collars. Yeah, these. Those fucking collars are good. Ton of meat in there. Good, Keith. All right, these guys hooked it up, man. Thank you, Captain Al. Uh, <laughs> one thing I found, man, Commercial fishermen do not want to be on camera. They are a rough and rugged crew. Um, but I cannot thank them enough. Otherwise, I would not have any fish to cook with. They had a pretty good day. They hit uh, brigals and cod. We'll talk about those in a minute. But um, I'm just going to use the uh, cod racks and the cod heads. And I think, because I still got this cold, we're going to make just kind of a light, nice vegetable soup. Uh, let's get back to the house and get cooking. All right, first things first for our chowder, we're gonna make a stock. Now, one of the reasons I'm cooking at the kitchen table with the outdoor cooker is because my mother's stove is on the fritz. So I didn't wanna start anything that we wouldn't be able to finish. So first thing, one onion. If you've ever watched my channel before, you've seen me make uh, stock or broth. I leave the skins on because it gives a richness to the broth and we're going to be straining it anyway. So none of that skin or anything is going to be in there. So it's okay. So throw those in. I do, however, cut off the roots just in case there's any dirt in there. You don't want that in there because that'll get through the, uh, the mesh of the strainer. So one onion. Some celery. A good amount of garlic. All I do with them, same thing. I'm going to leave the skins on. I'm just going to smash them and cut them in half there. Two carrot. Again, cut the ends off those. And one shallot. Now just a drop of oil. We don't need much because we're going to be adding water pretty soon. Good amount of sea salt. One bay leaf. You know what? That was pretty small. Two bay leaves. Now I will stir this now. Once I add the fish heads in the rack, I'm not going to stir it at all. I'm going to put the water in and I'm going to leave everything alone because I don't want a cloudy broth. And also, we're going to pick through these heads and add that meat to our chowder. So I want them to stay intact. I don't want to mix, mix them around. 
and have all the meat fall off and have to be picking through everything. So right now I'll give this a mix and that'll be the last time I mix it. And now the absolute star of the show, our cod. These really are beautiful fish. These, these are smaller actually. They get pretty big. Um, these are keeper size. But big shout out to uh, the Captain Al for hooking me up with these. But these are a deep water, cold water fish. Really, really clean white meat. People do cod cakes out of them. Um, I don't know. It's not, I'm going to be honest, it's not my favorite fish because it doesn't have much flavor to it. But. They are good and people go crazy for them. So we're just going to lay those on top. Along with our head. Oh, I just forgot a key thing. Hang on. we got to cut the gills out. I don't want the gills in because the gills can lend a bitter flavor to our stock. So we're going to cut those out of the head. Gills are also one of those things I never know if a serrated knife or scissors are the best way but no matter how long I've been cleaning fish cutting gills out has never ever come easily to me although this time we're doing pretty good all right gills are out from now on, I think I'm going serrated knife. I've tried to do scissors, it never works out. So we just lay our head in there. And our next rack. So I got really lucky when I came to Long Island and the weather was warmer than usual and it finally has hit cold weather. And that is why I am not cooking outside. All right, gills again. Going serrated knife all day on those gills. Way better. Way better than scissors. All right. We got our heads in, our racks in, all our veg. Now, a little bit more salt. And water. Perfect. We're gonna bring that up to a boil. Once it boils, bring it down to a simmer. We're gonna let it simmer for two hours and that's gonna be the base of our chowder. So I will see you back here in two hours. We will drain the pot and then pick the meat out of the heads. So our stock has been simmering for about two hours. It is absolutely gorgeous. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take the heads out and put them aside, let them cool down, and then I'm gonna pick the meat through them. Try to keep them all in one piece here. So the heads and everything else, that's all going into the fridge. Now we're gonna strain our broth. I'm not gonna go too crazy on the racks because, well, the guys on the Captain Al are really good full hairs, so there wasn't a lot of meat on those racks, but there is a good amount of meat on the heads. So if you see the racks going into my strainer, that's why. So now we have the base of our chowder. 
Again, I'm gonna let the heads cool down, pick the meat, and then we'll get started on our chowder. But look how beautiful this golden brown broth is. It smells rich, it smells so good. The cod definitely has a fishy smell to it, but not in a bad way. I don't mean that in a bad way at all. It smells so good already that anything else we add to this chowder is just extra. So just to give you an idea, that right there is just the collars. I haven't even gotten to the heads yet. And look at how much meat we already have. All I do, just pin the, peel the skin back there. And this big old chunk of head meat right there. That is beautiful. Now to start our chowder. Um, very, very simple. First things first, butter. We're gonna do a whole big scoop of butter there. Now, one onion, we will dice that. There's definitely something about whenever I come up to New York and the minute that that cold weather hits, I want chowder. <laughs> it's, and New England all the way. Um, I am a fan of the lighter chowders like Manhattan or Rhode Island. I've made the Rhode Island uh, oyster chowder on my channel. But there is something unbeatable about New England chowder. Whether it be clam chowder, which is my favorite, or a fish chowder like the one that we're making today. So I'm putting in uh, one whole onion here. And I don't have my pot up too hot. I just want to sweat these down. I don't want them to take on any color. All right, and next we have more celery. It's about one stalk. And we're just gonna rough chop that. Give that a little more heat. Get it going. A little bit of salt to that. And we want that to start sweating just a little bit. You could add garlic to that. I don't think it needs it because I had so much in the broth. And then the other thing is most New England chowders are started with either a salt pork or a bacon. We're going to skip that today. I just wasn't in the mood for it. I wanted to keep it a nice clean fish chowder. I don't want any of that. But what I am going to substitute it with is a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. And that's going to give it that little bit of umami smoky flavor so I can skip the bacon. And what I have here is just two medium-sized Yukon Gold potatoes. Uh, we're just going to dice those, not too fine, not too big. I find that they hold up a little bit better in the chowder than, say, uh, like a russet or an Idaho. I like these much better. Give a little stir. All right, we're not gonna add the potatoes just yet. We're gonna keep them on the side here. We're gonna sweat these down a little bit more. Then we'll add our potatoes and some of our other herbs and spices. Okay, those are looking good. Now we can go in with our potatoes. Now, a little bit of cracked black pepper. A touch more salt for our potatoes. Some dried thyme. We're gonna add fresh parsley at the end, but for right now, just a little bit of dried thyme. I usually do fresh thyme, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't feel like picking through all those stems, and I know you can tie them up and put them in there, but we're going with dried, it's okay. Smelling pretty good already. All right, so now our Worcestershire. 
Not too much. Just a bit of Worcestershire there. Again, just to give it that umami, a little more salt, a little more, a little more depth. Because otherwise it would be a little bit flat. That Worcestershire is gonna cut through the cream that we put in a little bit. That smells really good. All right, now I have here our broth that we made, or stock that we made and simmered down for two hours. We're gonna add that. Now I'm gonna bring that up to a boil and then bring it down to a simmer. And then we're gonna let that cook to where the potatoes are almost cooked all the way through. And then we're gonna add our flour and cream. And the very last thing we're gonna add is our cod because it's already cooked. So that we're putting in right before we serve it. So once my potatoes are almost done, I'll see you back here. Okay, our potatoes are done. Well, close to done, but there's a reason why I don't want them all the way cooked through yet because we're gonna bring this up to a boil when we add our cream. So the first thing, I got about a third of a cup of flour. I'm gonna put that in the bowl here and then just a spoonful, not even, half a spoonful of uh, cornstarch. And then we're gonna slowly add half and half. And whisk that so that it's smooth. And now we're gonna bring the heat up on our chowder very, very slowly add our cream while stirring. We don't want that to cool down, so we want it to come back up. So a little bit of a boil there. I think I got a little too generous with the cream. I cooled it down too much. That's okay, we're gonna bring it back up, keep adding our cream. There we go. Make sure we get all that flour and cornstarch in there. Now, we're gonna boil this and keep stirring for about two minutes. And what that's gonna do is cook down the cream it's gonna incorporate that flour and cornstarch and it's gonna thicken our chowder. It is definitely a labor of love. Everything in this recipe is a labor of love. Making the stock takes two hours, picking through the heads, making the chowder itself. It's a very, very, very time consuming endeavor, but in the end, it is definitely worth it. And you can taste the amount of time that went into it. I don't want anything to stick to the bottom, and that's why I give it the occasional stir. I don't want the cream to burn on the bottom. So you want to keep it moving for the full two, three minutes that we cook it. But I can already see and already feel that it's thickening, thickening up really nicely. I'm going to bring that down to a simmer. And once that cools down and kind of settles down a bit, we're going to add our cod that we had picked. And like I said, we're adding this last minute. It's already cooked through. It's already very cooked through. I mean, we cooked it for two hours. <laughs> you know, it's still not dried out. And that, again, is because we used the head meat. It's still really, really good. I'm going to hold up beautifully, beautifully in our chowder. We'll add it last minute. We'll put out a couple of bowls. I'll get my mom in here to do a little bit of a taste test. So I'll see you back in just two seconds. All right, it has sufficiently cooled down. Still got a little bit of a boil, but I'm gonna add our cod, all the head meat and collar meat. And we have mom clams here. 
<laughs> She's our taste tester. Just taking a break from yelling at the football game on TV, so. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like Manhattan clam chowder or New England or? I grew up with my mother making Manhattan clam chowder, so that's okay. the one I'm most used to. Uh, New England is good, but I guess I do have a tendency toward Manhattan. Manhattan. But this doesn't seem to be as thick as some New England chowders are. It will be once it cools down. And also, I don't, I don't like using a lot of flour, so I didn't put it too much in. Because it doesn't need to be, I mean, yeah, some of them you can stick a spoon up in them. Yeah. So that was that was not what I was looking for. So I'm going to add on the top here just a little bit of fresh parsley. Just to brighten it up a bit. Because that is going to be very, very rich. Also looks very hot. <laughs> good, good luck. <laughs> oh, a nice big chunk of uh, cod in there. Let's see that one big old chunk of cod. Oh boy. All right. It's a hot bowl. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to take a while. That's okay. We got time. The fish is succulent, very tender, and the flavors of the broth are subtle, yet very distinctive. All right. Very nice. Well, you heard it there, and she wouldn't <laughs> lie. She wouldn't lie. But uh, yeah, so like I said, it takes a little bit of extra effort to pick through the head. But let me tell you, it is worth it because if you use the meat off of the rack or if you use, I mean, God forbid you put cod filet into soup, it would be dried out. It would taste like chalk. The head meat is an amazing, amazing, versatile ingredient. Um, one of the other things is that the cod uh, fishery, it's not great. I wouldn't personally go cod fishing. But I feel okay going to the boats and collecting the heads and the scraps that they were going to throw away anyway. Well, all right. We're going to pour ourselves out some soup, warm up, and watch the rest of the football game. If you like this episode, hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.